Hey everyone, Dread Joker here, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of my older Master Grades, the Cubelay. This is Haman Karn's Cubelay from the Double Zeta Gun or from the Zeta and Double Zeta Gundam anime. This is a bit of a weird one because anytime I bring this up in some sections of the community, I get I love this, I hate this, I don't want this kit to exist. This is a weird one because I don't know why everybody is complaining about this. It does have some problem areas, but articulation is certainly not high up among them because we've never seen the Cubelay doing running or deep flexing. This thing's primary mode of attack was its funnels. So zooming out, we're going to have to go back and back and back. Keep going. A little further. Keep going. Keep going. There's the... And we're not even there. I have to slide it back because these shoulder pads are almost as wide as my set. This is ridiculous. Your average Gundam shoulder pad stops at the shoulder. This is generally how far out they go, with the exception of the GPO2. And yeah, this is about accurate if we're talking GPO2. We're not. But this is another one of those heavy mobile suits. It has light armaments, all things considered. For basic articulation, and i got to bring this back forward, starting off with, we're going to get the cockpit mechanism open, done and over with right away. It does have a fully opening cockpit. To do so, you raise this up, come in here, you try and jimmy this little tab out, and there you can see a nice hot pink Haman Karn sitting in the cockpit. Without a pilot suit, come on Haman, you're the one who's always yelling at the troops about this, put the suit on. Closing it back up now, it's really simple to open, but I really do love the fact that at most angles, the Cubelay's cockpit hatch is fully exposed. So all you need is one shot from above and you're going straight through that. Bye bye pilot. As far as stickers goes, would you believe me if I said that there is only one sticker on this entire mobile suit? Everything else is decals. You have these dry transfers and then you have the actual sticker style decals. I didn't bother with either of these because this is a very, very high gloss kit. It's glossy to the point of it looks like a pearl in person. I really can't tell you how well it's capturing on camera. But getting right down to it, the head is very reminiscent of an anteater. And it has... Um, someone in the comments let me know who's which Dragon Ball villain's head this looks like. I want to say Frieza second form, but at the same time... I think his head was shorter than this. This is really, really long. It's like somebody was just deciding to maybe cut corners and just welded part of a roller coaster to the back of her head. Moving down to the neck articulation, it's uh, very good, actually. The neck goes extremely far back, but at a cost. The side-to-side, -side, actual side-to-side, -side, yeah. That's it. It, um, side to side sucks. But that's what the eyes are for. Plus, with this being a new type mobile suit, you don't exactly have to look where you're shooting. Shoulders. Nice, big, ball jointed shoulders in here on polycaps. Very weirdly constructed, too. This is a very deceptive kit. Also, painful if you're not prepared for a couple sections, and these sections are just. The backpack. The instructions hurt. Very badly. Because, and moving just right around here, every single one of these funnels is its own separate piece that you have to put onto a polycap type segment that goes in there. And oh my god, those tips are sharp. They don't look very sharp, but they're very narrow. So when you're assembling this, if you're doing it wrong, you're going to end up bleeding. Badly. I almost did. 
But as you can see, the backpack does very much fold up. And every time I saw the Cubelay, I didn't realize that was the backpack. I thought that was the butt flap. So, nuts to me. Moving on with articulation, each of these binders is on a... The shoulder binders can separate, swing out. So if you thought the shoulders were big before, yeah, they get bigger. This exposes the actual shoulder pad, and you can do this on both sides. This is essentially the same shoulder pad as it. Basically, take the left shoulder pad, or whichever one you want, it's the same one on both sides. So that part's actually fairly easy to do. Getting this all assembled and working, not exactly the best thing in the world. Arms can go only this far out, so about 90 degrees out, a little over 90. Uh, hands, you get three different sets of hands with this. You get these, uh, yeah, you get these really long ones. You get your standard closed fists, which are used for the beam sabers, which you will barely ever use because you don't actually have to use these deployed. And then you get the articulated hands, which are all right, but are a nightmare to clean up in terms of nubs. They don't look bad. Not too bad. Um, I'm still cleaning these up. I built this kit over two months ago, and I'm still cleaning these up. This is a polycap-like material. It doesn't want to clean up. I'm going to have to take a box cutter to these or something just to smooth these down. Because I can't file them. As far as other accessories go, the only thing else in the box, aside from the hands and everything you see on the cubelay right now, these two yellow beams. These are for the beam sabers, which this is the one mobile suit I can say definitely has something up its sleeves. Number one, you're looking at the max elbow bend right here. It's on a ball joint in here and a poly cap joint up here. So it all goes together for maybe 90, a little more than 90. But to use the beam sabers, because they actually keep the beam cannons up the arm, so you can just act like it's going to go Assassin's Creed style and have the beam sabers just deploying from the handles, which is fairly common, or if you want, you can have it in a shooting pose because these are also its primary beam rifles. Very weird, I know. And to get these out, you just insert the beam and jimmy the beam saber out. It's not easy because these beam sabers are in polycap joints in there, so they're very much in there. Maybe it works on this arm. One of these worked better than the others. Come on. Come on. I will give you all of access again. Stop. Okay, never mind. Guess she's content with running what she already has. Uh, front skirting. Molded together, cannot be separated, but gets a massive bend out of it, which is good, because it gets it away out of the way of everything. Action base connector, you have none, which means if you're going to put this on a stand, you got to use one of these old-style connectors. Legs, very far forward, given the bulk of this thing. Also, considering it has gigantic clown shoes... You can get about 90 degrees out of the knee. Articulation from here gets um, wonky. Knee pad can go up, and now it's starting to look like something else here. Then the toes bend very far down. So this is definitely a flight-type mobile suit, very much requesting to be up on an action base. It would look good in a flying pose, but at the same time, when it's on the ground, it's planted. Once you get its balance corrected and you get these binders all in the way you want, it's good. And sorry if you hear the sniffles, I am coming down with what I believe is another sinus infection. It's... <sighs> you do a lot of yard work, or any yard work, and you're allergic to the stuff and you forget to take your sinus medicine one time, this is what happens. I love it. Overall... I picked this up locally for about 38 bucks, and I love this thing. Does it have some flaws? Oh, yeah. Does it have pretty bad flaws? Oh, no, absolutely not. And it does have this absolutely lovely 
side to side rocky here so it has a very deep set of movement everywhere except for the front if this front skirting here was shorter or gone it would have an ab crunch that goes probably all the way forward actually let's find this out let's pop this out and no actually it does not go all the way forward would have been nice if it could have but all, at the same time then it probably would have started suffering from what i call exia syndrome where it would be too mobile for its own good and it wouldn't stand overall i highly recommend this kit this is a lovely master grade for those who just want to sit down and build something big and as an added bonus this thing is actually almost the size of its own box for a change it does need some detailing work i'm not going to lie if you detailed it all up i'm sure it would look fabulous and as an added bonus the only difference between this and lpo puru's Cubelet Mark II is literally all of this white has to be a purple. That's it. That's the only difference. Everything else is 100% the same. Puru II's unit is more of a change because all the white has to be red, all the pink has to be yellow. It's different. It requires a lot more thought there, but if you can pick this one up cheaply, it is more available than the other two Cubelets in the set. And for those of you wondering, sadly no, there is no mass production type Cubelet on the market. Oh how I wish I would have bought a bunch of them and then had my double Zeta with an army to fight. Bandai, please give us a mass production Cubelet, I don't care if it's a Re100 or a high grade. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them down there in the comments section below. I'll be make sure to, I'll read them and get back to you when I can. Thank you very much for watching.